Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the International Mathematical Olympiad 1969, long listed problem number 8, proposed by Bulgaria. Uh, so this problem was long listed, so it means that it was not actually given on the competition, but it was considered to be given. We wish to find all functions f from the set of real numbers into itself, satisfying x times f of y plus y times f of x equals x plus y times f of x times f of y for all real numbers x and y, and moreover we wish to prove that exactly two of these functions are continuous. So here are my hints for the problem. Consider two cases. Suppose first that f of y0 is 0 for some non-zero number, and then set y to be y0 to find the general form of f. And the second case, much more interesting, Suppose that f of x is not zero for every non-zero number x. Set x and y to be the same and both not zero and find f of x. And remember to do the verification in the end. So give this problem a try. All right. So let's consider, as I suggested, two cases. Case number one. Case number one will be uh, when f of y 0 equals 0 for some non-zero number y 0. In this case, let's set y to be equal y 0. Then, then we have the following equation. x times f of y 0 plus y 0 f of x equals x plus y0, f of x, f of y0. And now, notice that f of y0 is 0, f of y0 is 0, so we have y0, f of x equals 0, which after division by y0 uh, gives us f of x equals 0. Now you see why I have assumed that x, y0 is not 0 which means that our function is constantly equal to zero. For every real number x, f of x equals zero. That's one possibility. All right, second case. Case number two will be when, when f of x is not zero for any non-zero number x. Then let's set let's set x and y to be the same and both not zero. Then our equation becomes on the left hand side we'll have two x f of x and on the right hand side we'll have two x f of x squared. All right. And now. <clears throat> Notice that I can safely divide by x, because I'm assuming that they are not zero, and also, because of my assumption, I can divide by f of x, and I am left with 1 equals f of x. Alright, so in this case, our function is of this form. f of x is 1 for non-zero arguments x, and what about f of 0? Well, we have no constraints right now, so it's some number c for x equals 0, where c is a real constant. All right. So, we have two families of solutions, or maybe they are solutions. We have to do verification to make sure. Verification. Let's start with our first function, which is constantly zero. If f of x equals zero for every real number x, uh, well then, of course, x times f of y is zero, y times f of x is zero, and this, of course, equals x plus y, f of x, f of y. Nothing special in this case. But second case will be more interesting. So if 
f of x is 1 for non-zero numbers x and f of x equals and f of 0 equals c, then <clears throat> we'll consider three cases. Case number one. Case number one will be when both x and y are not zero. Both are not zero. Then on the left hand side, on the left hand side, we have x f of y plus y f of x. And this is x plus y because f of x and f of y is 1. Uh, and notice that this is the same as x plus y, f of x, f of y, which is on the right hand side. All right, case number two. Case number two will be when both x and y are zero. Then notice that on the left hand side, this time we have x times f of y plus y times f of x. Mm. So it's x times c plus y times c. So it's c x plus y c times x plus y. But <laughs> of course, x and y are zero. So <laughs> let's write zero. And this is of, of course also x plus y f of x, f of y, which is on the right hand side. All right. And, and finally, case number three, mixed case. Because of symmetry, let's consider when x is zero and y is not zero. Then, on the left hand side, we have x, f of y, y, f of x. Well, x is zero, so we have y times c. Mm, is it the same as x plus y, f of x, f of y? Well, it is because x is zero, so it disappears. y is y, f of x is one. Uh, no, sorry, it's c. So it's c times y, and f of y is one. So it all all works out. All right. So it is verified. So our family of solutions. Solutions. We have two families of solutions. First is function which is constantly zero. And second, f of x equals one or non zero arguments and c or zero argument where c is a constant. All right, and finally, uh, the last, the last uh, thing to be done, we wish to prove that exactly two of these functions are continuous, and this is obvious. Function which is constantly zero is continuous, and for the second function to be continuous, we need to assume that c equals one. So uh, only two functions are continuous. function which is constantly 0 and function which is constantly 1. So, who is really close to our problem? So, and that is it. So, I hope that you've learned something new this time. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.